Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And I know I am late to this topic, but the RTX 2050 is here. And as you can see on my screen right now, you can see Nvidia has quietly put the RTX 2050 column on the RTX 2000 series uh, display page on their website. And uh, there is one laptop right now that is featuring this GPU, which is this Acer Aspire 5. And the pricing looks quite good. We'll talk about this laptop. But before talking about the laptop, we'll talk about what the RTX 2050 is. You know its architecture and all that stuff and is it you know worth buying over a gtx 1650 spoiler alert yes it's definitely is worth buying over a gtx 1650 okay so going back to the specs over here so if you look at the specs carefully you can see that the rtx 2050 is actually having more cuda cores than the rtx 2060 you can see rtx 2060 had 1920 cuda cores whereas the rtx 2050 has 2040 CUDA cores. The reality is the RTX 2050 is basically a cut down RTX 3050. So the RTX 2050 is not actually an RTX 2000 series GPU. It's actually an RTX 3000 series GPU. It features the Ampere architecture based on Samsung's 8 nanometer processing node. And it's just RTX 2000 series for the namesake. So if you go and check out, you know, video cards, uh, spec sheet over here you can see that the rtx 2050 is actually based on the same ga107 die that is present in the mx5710 as well as the rtx 3050 the only difference between the rtx 3050 and the rtx 2050 is basically the memory configuration you can see the rtx 2050 has only 64 bit you no know, memory bus that's actually quite low honestly that's actually similar to I think an RX 6500M or RX 6500XT, it's similar to that. So that is the main uh, drawback of this RTX GPU. Obviously, they had to do something to differentiate between the RTX 3050 and the 2050. So you can see the maximum boost clock is slightly lower and the memory configuration is 4 GB GDDR6, but at 64 bit, the overall TGP is quite low. It's almost half the standard RTX 3050. Then the standard 3050 is available at around 75 watt most of the time. Some laptops have, you know, full 85 watts. So the top end RTX 2050 is only 45 watts. So coupled with the, you know, the lower TGP, which results in lower clock speed and the memory bus configuration, this is where NVIDIA has uh, sort of gimped the RTX 2050 so that people, so that, it's, so that it creates a separation between 3050 and 2050. And as a result of the 2050 is coming at a lower price. So overall, this affects the raw restoration performance, which is lower than the 3050. The the raw restoration, the raw performance of the 2050 is about 20-23% uh, faster than a 650. Now we don't have the exact results of an RTX 2050's raw restoration performance. I mean, I don't have a laptop a review unit to test it out, but you can see uh, on Notebook Checks website, uh, the 2050 is about 20% slower. Than 3050 so it's 20% faster 20 23% faster than a 1650 and about 20% slower than 3050 so uh, so depending on the price you know in the coming sales if the 3050 laptops you know come at a price around let's say 65,000 rupees or lower and the 2050 laptops stay at the same price then I would say a 3050 is a better choice it's clearly the better choice However, if you're stuck between a 1650 and a 2050 choice, I would say the 2050 is a better choice. However, as I said, 2050 is available in just one laptop. So this laptop needs to be good. Otherwise, what's the use of the GPU? Luckily, this laptop is also quite good. We'll talk about it just in a while. But I just want to reiterate, why would you want to purchase this RTX GPU over a GTX GPU? Obviously, there is the factor that this RTX 2050 is decent. It's a, it's a decent jump over the... 1650 is about a 20 23 percent jump in terms of raw gaming performance that is a raw gpu horsepower is better than a 1650 is about about 20 23 percent but aside from the raw restoration performance you get some incredibly uh, handy features the first one is obviously dlss yes so the rtx 2050 is the cheapest gpu that will give you access to deep learning super sampling so DLSS, you know, it's quite well known by now. It is the best upscaling technique currently available in mobile GPUs. Uh, it works really well when it comes to upscaling lower resolution content to higher resolution. So it works better than FSR when it comes to, you know, in the lower resolution. So if you are 
you know upscaling from 720p to 1080p dlss works much better than fsr so i'm talking about the raw restoration performance so the raw restoration performance of the 2050 is about 23 percent faster than 1650 but on top of this you can add dlss which will boost the frame rates even further which will make it overall about 35 to 40 50 percent faster than a 650 depending upon the setting of dlss you use in your games and almost every game coming up right now like all the future titles the big titles coming out all have dlss most of them have dlss so the cheapest gpu to give you access to a dlss is the rtx 2050 which is one of the biggest selling points of this gpu so the presence of dlss makes the 2050 a massive upgrade over the gtx 650 aside from dlss if you are a content creator you get access to the rt cores the tensor cores which will allow you to use you know nvidia optics rendering engine ai accelerated features uh, you know simulation you get cuda obviously cuda is available in gtx series as well but the optics uh, you know um, api that allows you to use your rt cores your tensor cores in 3d modeling and stuff like that will help you a lot if you are using if you're a beginner learning to use uh, you know softwares like blender it will really help you in terms of you know the overall performance the fluidity and all it's a big improvement over the gtx series if you are a budding you know machine learning enthusiast you're learning to train models and all that again nvidia's rtx platform you can take help of the tensor cores and this will again boost machine learning performance by a lot i mean the gtx series doesn't have these features it doesn't have rt cores or tensor cores so it's basically it cannot compete in this department also if you are a content creator if you are a video editor and all that again the new rtx encoders inside the rtx 2000 series or, or the 3000 series is much better than the nvidia encoders inside the gtx series the gtx 1650 actually has the older gtx 10 series encoders the gtx 1650 even doesn't have the gtx 16 series encoders it actually has the old gtx 10 series encoder it doesn't have the turing encoders in the gtx 1650 series so that is again a massive jump if you are going to do you know light video editing not light i would say you can do pretty good amount of uh, video editing uh, with the gt with the rtx 2050 so again that's another big advantage with the rtx 2050 and also at the end i would like to add nvidia broadcast which is available with rtx 2000 or rtx 2000 series gpus basically if you are a budding uh, you know let's say streamer you want to stream your games you want to record gameplay then the nvidia encoder coupled with you know the all the rtx features will provide you with awesome uh ecosystem of streaming applications for example you have got nvidia broadcast which includes rtx voice i am recording video in this crowded in this uh, you know noisy environment and it is very difficult for me to sort of uh, uh, clean out the noise it's difficult for me to denoise the audio but rtx voice is so good you just you just go to youtube and search for the demos available rtx voice utilizes the tensor cores to use to do some amazing ai background denoising of your voice it sounds natural at the same time and doesn't like it it cleans out the noise so well it filters out the background noise so well and at the same time your voice still remains quite full and doesn't become robotic it's an amazing feature rtx voice then you also get virtual background you can replace your background you can you know uh, blur the background and the overall cutout as you can see in this small example is very good because it uses utilizes real time you know ai acceleration so again it has got auto framing then you can also you know denoise your video so i mean this rtx uh, cards have the ability to use nvidia broadcast due to the tensor cores and it's an amazing uh, ecosystem for those who want to stream your videos want you want a uh, all-in-one streaming setup all right enough about the rtx 2050 let's take a look at the actual laptop that is coming with this gpu so first of all the price is really good the reason is it features a core i5 1240p which features four performance cores and six efficiency cores and overall the performance of the i5 1240p is extremely close 
to the i7 1260p which also features four um performance cores and six per, uh, and efficiency cores it's just that the i7 1260p boosts higher and has more l3 cache i think it has got 18 megabytes of l3 cache whereas the 1240p has 12 megabytes of l3 cache and overall the performance of the i5 1240p is actually very similar to the ryzen 5 5600h in terms of multi-core performance but in terms of single core performance this thing is actually better than the ryzen 5 5600h and the good thing is that this cpu is actually rated for 28 watts only so that's also good for your battery life because this laptop comes with a 50 watt battery which is kind of small for intel standards so yeah at 28 watts uh, the battery life should be also pretty good the ram is upgradable it features an ips display which is pr quite good and the best feature of this laptop the main reason i'm really uh, satisfied with the price is the fact that this laptop features thunderbolt 4 Thunderbolt 4 guys for at 63,000 rupees. That is amazing. It already features an RTX 22 GPU, but because of the presence of a pretty good CPU, which has quite good single core performance, and the fact that it features Thunderbolt 4 means that in the future, you can use an external GPU with this laptop. Let's say five years from now when the RTX 22 is pretty much dead, you can add an external GPU to this laptop using the Thunderbolt 4 port, using an eGPU dock. Which means, if you want, you can carry this laptop, it's a thin laptop, everywhere with the RTX 2050 GPU, which is quite good. But, if you come home, you can plug your external GPU and you can game with the external GPU. So, the, the Thunderbolt 4 port provides a lot of value. You can also connect high-speed external displays to the Thunderbolt 4 port, which is again, amazing. So overall, this laptop looks quite good. I mean, the price is almost quite perfect. The cooling solution is also quite adequate. It has got two fans. I know the fans are together in one heat pipe, but it is pretty much enough to handle a 45 watt GPU and just a 28 watt CPU. So uh, this laptop looks uh, pretty, I mean, the pricing seems to be amazing. I would say I'm pretty sure in the sales, it may go down, let's say, thousand rupees or two thousand rupees and at 60 60 one thousand rupees it'll be a, a pretty good choice for a entry-level gaming laptop and completely eradicate the need for a gtx 650 i think this rtx 2050 will finally absolutely kill the gtx 650 once and forever so yeah that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching i'm sorry i don't have the laptop to test i mean i'm still not at a position when uh laptop manufacturers will be sending me laptops for testing so unfortunately there is still some time to go before i can get uh, review units but yeah i'm trying to give you as much information as possible from my experience i have been using computers and laptops for a really long time and i do know my stuff so yeah that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching like share and subscribe if you're new to the channel then definitely subscribe and turn on notifications and yeah i'll catch you in the next one guys peace